Let me tell you, the quality of video game voice acting has definitely improved, thanks in no small part to the Troy Bakers and Laura Baileys of the world, but I've still dug up a few fantastic flubs from the not-so-distant past. Sometimes the fault lies with the actor, sometimes it's the writing, and sometimes even the seemingly flawless combination of a AAA game, an Emmy award-winning actor, and a world-renowned game studio still can't manage to hit the mark. But at least we'll never forget where that wizard came from. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are nine recent hilarious voice acting fails from video games. Number 9. Sub-Zero DJ – Mortal Kombat 11 Mortal Kombat has had a bunch of excellent performances over its long history. The choice to cast Ronda Rousey as Sonya Blade in Mortal Kombat 11 was certainly a controversial one, but even she had the odd supporter, unlike Dimitri Vegas. For the uninitiated, Dimitri Vegas is a super popular Belgian DJ, who is very clearly much better at making music than voice acting. When Warner Brothers announced that Vegas would be available as a skin for Sub-Zero, fans were understandably skeptical. It wasn't the biggest problem in the looks department, but plenty of players got a giggle out of listening to Vegas' growling, intense attempt to replicate the iconic fighter. Why should I pray to you? Why does a bird flap its wings? I asked a simple question. Some players said that the performance came off as a quote, low budget anime dub, but personally I kinda love that he's obviously so genuinely excited about it and he is clearly trying. In any case, the skin was free and optional, and Vegas was partly responsible for remixing the theme song for MK11's trailer, so even the most appalled diehard fans could probably forgive this voice acting misstep. Number 8. Zelda – The Legend of Zelda – Breath of the Wild in a sublime case of being careful what you wish for, we finally got proper voice acting in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and then many promptly wished we hadn't. How a franchise so celebrated and a game this fantastic couldn't nail its voice acting is still a bit of a mystery. From Zelda's high-pitched, strangely posh British accent that comes off a lot like a 30-year-old doing a young girl's voice, to Mipha's breathy and somewhat emotionally void portrayal, the English voice acting left much to be desired. Divine beasts. So much we don't know. But if we want to turn back Calamity Ganon, they're our best hope. May I ask who the other chosen champions are? I tried and I failed them all. I left them all to die. Some players were definitely fans of Nintendo's choices, but a lot were reaching for the mute button come cutscenes. While many of the game's performances were criticised, there were also some high points, namely that of Ravali. Eventually, the game received an update that had nine different language tracks which you could switch between at will. Time will tell if Breath of the Wild 2 makes adjustments based on player feedback and delivers performances that are more epic fantasy adventure quality and less, well excuse me princess, quality. Number 7. A Campy Tradition – Shenmue 3 if the combination of bad voice acting and Shenmue ring serious bells for you, that's because the series is pretty infamous for having a notoriously bad English dub. Often falling squarely into the so bad it's good category, some players enjoy the stilted, oddly delivered voice acting, as it's all part of the unique Shenmue charm. If you haven't seen Shenmue 2's voice acting performance that's supposed to be a five-year-old child but sounds like an inebriated Texan woman, please check it out. Despite arriving in 2019, a full 18 years after its predecessor, Shenmue 3 decided to shirk the industry trend of implementing way better voice acting and instead keep its wildly weird and occasionally painful performances. Hey, Shenhua. Yeah? I think we should split up and look for the bookie. I'll search from here to the village square. The story of Shenmue 3 had plenty of fans, so it's a shame the primary way of accessing it is through bizarrely written and acted dialogue. Dialogue that is often repeated over and over in uninspiring conversations that go on for way longer than you want them to. One of the most glaringly odd performances is that of protagonist Ryo, who delivers many of his lines with exactly the same intonation, regardless of what he's saying. My name is Ryo Hazuki. Iwao was my father. Hey there. Yeah? That looks great. At least he's consistent? That said, there are a couple of theories as to what's going wrong here. One is that the localization team are doing their best to represent the fact that Ryo is Japanese, while everyone around him is not, even though everyone has to speak English. 
Another is a strong suspicion among fans that given they got a handful of seriously talented voice actors on board, the stilted awkward voice acting and writing is actually deliberate. But I'll let you be the judge. Number 6. Could've used a second take. Hidden Dragon Legend. Now, I don't love coming for indie games in the voice acting department. They traditionally don't have the budget, team sizes, and ability to call in big localization companies when needed to perfect performances in the same way giant studios can. But here we are, I'm doing it anyway. Let's talk about Oasis Games 2017 2.5D action platformer Hidden Dragon Legend. Hidden Dragon Legend is a perfectly serviceable video game. Well, it's, it's pretty much fine. It's definitely and indisputably a video game. What is not fine is its voice acting. Save for one or two good performances that sit in super stark contrast to the rest, almost every line is delivered like the English audio voice acting director just had a mad hangover that day, and every first attempt was fine so long as it meant the session would be wrapped up faster. Captain, we found one, and he's an incredibly skilled warrior. The delivery is peppered with some really um, unique choices on which words in a sentence should be emphasized, and the accent of the protagonist is absolutely indiscernible. Faye would be disappointed to know her elder sister is a member of the very same organization. The audio quality is also all over the place, but look, if you can find it funny and in keeping with a classic campy action-packed B-movie, you might be able to look past its faults and play the game underneath. Except the game underneath isn't that great. So if you've decided to be forgiving of inconsistent accents and bizarre voice acting choices, then why not do that for a different game? A better game, like... Number 5. Jason Heavy Rain Remastered Technically this one came out in 2010, but the remaster came out in 2016, introducing a whole new generation to press X to Jason and the joys of a largely European cast doing their best American accents. Expect a lot of the word origami being pronounced wrong, a dad on a desperate hunt for his kidnapped son who sounds pretty bored about it most of the time, and plenty of gameplay mechanics doing in any attempts from the actors to deliver better performances, when you have the ability to make your character say one name 50 times in a row with only four recorded variations. Jason. Jason. Jason! Any Sean's or Jason's growing up around the time that this game's memes were spreading like wildfire can tell you it was not a good time. Among my favorites are the wildly harsh way Norman Jaden introduces himself in a quasi-Bostonian accent, a drowning Sean who comes off like he's just super over it, and literally any take where you catch yourself wondering if that was really the best they could get. The biggest consolation is this game is as good as its voice acting is wildly inconsistent. I'd still recommend it. Number 4. Princess Beach – Death Stranding Now I've said this in a few What Culture videos by this point, but I genuinely love Death Stranding. I think it's a fantastic game with a ton of payoff and excellent performances from legitimate A-listers. But there's one thing I will not forgive, and that's Princess Bloody Beach. This is a video about voice acting fails, and this is a voice acting fail in part, but I'm coming for the writer on this one. Sorry Kojima. Here we are having realized the walking simulator is actually really touching, and the tricky walking mechanic bits are actually really meaningful and fulfilling. Even the batch crazy story has significantly hooked you in. Everything's falling into place. And then Death Stranding is like, here's what we'll do. We'll have this extremely emotional narrative moment between Rita's Sam and his sister Amelie, and we'll have her look at Sam deadly serious, and then say they can run down the beach to get back home. And I quote, just like Mario and Princess Beach. Like Mario and Princess Beach. Even better, what follows is almost a full minute of slow-mo running down the beach. That's not a voice acting fail, I just need you to know that. I seriously still remember playing this game as soon as it came out and telling my friends that this happened and this line was actually uttered and they just didn't believe me. You can't make this stuff up. Number 3. Complete Cringe – The Crew 2 Does The Crew 2 have dialogue so cringy it will actually impact on how much you can enjoy playing and winning races? Sure. Will you care? Look, probably not. The game has solid mechanics and you're there for a good racing time, not a top-notch voice acting appreciation time. Everyone's got a moment where they realize why they're racing. Well, for me, it was the day my bike went one way and I went the other, and I broke two ribs. Where this becomes a problem is when you're trying to enjoy the fast, pretty cars and are instead enjoying lines that are supposed to hype you up, like, 
get real, you're both gonna lose to my friend out there. Or awkward musings like, in off-road, we leave the beaten path to find the beauty of nature. The reply being, in freestyle, we leave the beaten path to find the fun. Delivered weirdly forced and without an ounce of irony. Yikes. The game goes to so much effort to tell you how cool you are and how much all your fans love you that it results in you feeling the opposite. Some players insisted overly enthusiastic dialogue is part and parcel with the genre, but plenty more still thought Yubi went way too far with it. Players actually reached out on the official Yubi forums to chide the publisher for trying too hard to appeal to millennials, with what I guess the writers assumed was how millennials talk. Basically, it's just really cheesy and awkward. At best, it's just voice actors phoning in their performances, and at worst, it's writing that feels very much like, how do you do, fellow kids? At least you can turn the voices off. Number two, that wizard came from the moon, Destiny. Peter Dinklage's infamous performance as Ghost in Destiny needs no introduction. I'm a ghost. Actually, now I'm your ghost. And you, well, you've been dead a long time. But even seven years on, plenty of us are still asking, how did this one even happen? The answer probably lies somewhere between a famous actor with better things to do, the era of having a little polygonal robot do the techno babble heavy story exposition in the first place, which Bungie rectified for the sequels, and some not so great writing. However you felt about it, the phrase, that wizard came from the moon, skyrocketed into gaming meme history. You know, I might blame the writers for that one. That wizard came from the moon. Dinklage's performance in Destiny was actually so hated that they ended up bringing in Nolan North to replace him. Or you know, he's a famous actor with better things to do. Whichever version of the story you prefer. Number one, basketballers aren't voice actors, and that's fine. NBA 2K15. When I was researching voice acting fails for this video, nothing, and I mean nothing, made me laugh as hard as the My Player Mode performances from NBA 2K15. And all the offenders are super rich basketballers, so I don't even have to feel bad about it. Everybody wins. There are plenty of montages of the voice acting that you can check out so you can listen to them in all their glory and not me explaining why they're funny. But given you're here listening to me and I have to tell you what it's like, I'll harken back to one of the best descriptions of the performances I saw online. That all you see in your head while you listen to them is the NBA players tracing their fingers along the scripts. It's made way funnier when the not so great performances from Dion Waiters or Al Jefferson are delivered immediately after someone like Shaquille O'Neal, who's actually doing a really great job. Sounds like a wise fella to win in this league. You need all hands on deck. Do the work, listen to the culture, and the result will take care of themselves. Because at the end of the day, it's not about the money, the nice hotel, the private jets. Remember that and you will be fine, okay? The voice acting directors clearly didn't want to ask the famous athletes for second takes. And, you know, I get it. They have places to be and they probably only had them for like 15 minutes. Personally, I'm way happier they turned out this way than if they nailed it. And it's not like they don't have wildly lucrative day jobs. All that said, if you want to relive listening to the awkward kid in class read out Shakespeare under duress, I cannot recommend these particular handful of voice acting fails enough. Let me know down in that comment section which video game voice acting fails are your favorite. I've been Jess from What Culture. Thanks so much for hanging out with me as always. You can come say hi to me on my Twitter where I'm at Jess McDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more content.